the 35 legendary Tello hope the sun would rise soon because this bizarre night needed to end. If Tello's world flipped on its head one more time, she would crack. What had her sister been doing with Jax? Of course, Tello still wasn't such a young woman who stepped out the couch with Scarlet. Tella hadn't gotten a clear look at her face, but Tella knew her sister and she knew Jax, who was long enough to drag Scarlet into this mess. Tella leaped out of her couch, and the moment it touched the ground, it nearly twisted her ankle, and then stopped her from rushing out of the carriage house, but it did delay her long enough to lose her sister. Are you running for someone? Or chasing after someone? The Prince of Hearts stepped out from the edge of the stone garden, blocking Tella's path as he tossed a glowing purple apple back and forth between the tips of her nimble fingers. Again, he didn't wear a coat and his shirt was only half ironed, and as if he'd grown impatient and taken it from a maid before she could finish her job. His pants were unwrinkled, but when the rising sun hit the blurry leather, Tella thought she saw a spatter that looked like blood. Tella took several st deep breaths, attempting to calm her racing heart. What are you doing with my sister? Do I detect some jealousy? You're delusional. Am I? Jack sauntered between forever frozen servants deeper into the garden forcing Tella to follow. This relationship is unreal, Tella groaned. How could I be jealous? Maybe you're wishing it was real. You flatter yourself too much. Only because my fiancé doesn't flatter me enough. Jack's tone was flippant. Yet, he didn't take his eyes off Tella as he propped one booted leg against the terrified stone statue at his side. Then, he pulled her out of dagger from his boot and began to peel the skin off from his apple, as if he suddenly lost interest in this conversation. You still haven't told me what you were doing with my sister, Tella demanded. I want you to stay away from her. Jax looked up from his life. She's the one who came looking for me. Why would she do that? I promise I wouldn't tell. Tella snorted. Don't act like you have a conscience. Jax sliced off the last bit of skin from his apple and took a deep bite. Just because my moral code is different from yours doesn't mean I don't have one. Maybe you should relevate it, Tella said. By most people's standards, killing someone is worse than breaking a person's confidence. Have I killed anyone since you've known me? Jax ran his tongue along the tips of his sharp white teeth before sinking them into the apple once more. Glowing juice as red as blood dripped from the corner of his mouth, mocking her as he ate. He acted careless and lazy, but he was the most calculating and confident of them all. He probably viewed her the same way he saw his apple, as something juicy to take a bite out of and then discard. Another drop of red fell from his lips and Stella launched herself at him. She knocked the apple from his pale hands. Then she went for his throat. His hands went around her wrist in a flash. You can't kill me, but I can try. She kicked at him. He easily dodged it. You're only going to tire yourself out, he said calmly. You already look exhausted. Save your strength to win the game tonight. She continued to kick. He effortlessly invaded her again. His cruel face appeared bored, but Tella swore she felt the blood rushing through her veins, heating the hands still encircling her wrist. He might have appeared indifferent, but his heart was beating as fast as hers. Tella stopped mid-kick. His heart was beating. She stumbled back and he let her go. You have a heartbeat. No, my heart hasn't beat in a very long time. You're the one who's delusional now. His voice was colder than she'd ever heard it, yet the chiller bot did not erase the searing memory of his hot hands around her wrist. I might be a lot of things, but I know what I felt, Tella said. Only one person can make it beat again, his one true love. They said his kiss had been fatal to all but her, his only weakness. I made her heart beat, Tella crowned. It was wild and absurd, Tur truly feral idea, but Tella felt the truth in her heart beat as well, which now sped up rather than slowed. Beat, 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 beat. It had never felt so strong, so free. I'm your one true love. Your kiss can't kill me. Jack scowled deep in. You shouldn't believe every story you hear. Do I look as if I'm in love with you? You always look like a monster to me, but that doesn't mean the myth is not true. And Tell imagined she didn't have to love him to be his true love, given that he was afraid of pure evil. Tell also imagined love for him was not the same as it would have been for a human, but that part didn't matter. What mattered was that being his one true love meant she was immune to his kiss. She no longer needed to win the game to live. This changes nothing. Jack's expression turned so sharp. A fistful of knives would have looked soft in comparison. But Tella was used to this miracle of looks. They couldn't hurt her, and neither could this poisonous lips. No, Tella said. This changes 
everything. Not for your mother. Jax crushed the heel of his boot atop the apple, till it had knocked onto the ground, until the fruit was nothing but bleeding flesh and juice. You still need me, if you want to free her. Maybe I no longer care about saving her. Tilla said as if she meant it, but the words tasted sour in her mouth. Not quite a lie, but not the truth. Jack seemed to sense her lack of conviction. He flashed a dimple as he prowled closer. You call me a monster, and even I think that's cold, Don Tella. His dimple vanished, and for a moment she saw his face hollow out with terror, in the same way it had the first time he spoke of being trapped inside a card. If any part of you ever wants to see your mother alive again, you'll be think helping me. Legend fears the fates going free and stealing his power, and he wants our power more than anything. If he ever gets his hands on the deck of destiny with the fates, he will destroy all of us along with your mother. The only way to save her is to win the game and help me free them. Unless you're foolish enough to take her place, and based on what you just said, I doubt you're willing to do that. Jack shucked her chin with one slender head before sauntering out of the garden as if their conversation had changed nothing at all. When Tella trucked back into the palace just after dawn, the golden tower had been transformed from Valentine's Eve. The balusters were covered with bogs of glistening fabric, reminiscence of unwed bride, veils of tears, and to Tella's discomfort, every maid she was had painted red stitches on her lips, transforming themselves into hair hay maidens. The sapphire wings were scarlet stayed was the same. Tella had stopped by there first to find out why her sister had been with Jax. Of course, Scarlet had not answered the door. Tella might have pounded on her sister's door a little harder, or waited a little longer, but her body was begging for sleep, and maybe Jax had been telling the truth. Maybe Scarlet had come after him to warn him not to hurt her sister. It sounded like something Scarlet would do. Tella had passed. My maidens with stitched up lips on the way to her tower room. They must have been working since before supper. When Tella had left the night before, each door had been unadorned. But now a different mask hung atop each archway in the entry, an old tradition meant to honor the face in the hope that they would bring blessings rather than curses. The maiden's death cage of perils hung above Tella's door. Tella knew it was merely another outside thief's tradition, yet it felt like a warning, one more reminder of what she would lose if she decided to give up on the game. She no longer needed to win Carvel to it, but could she leave her mother trapped in a card? Tella wanted to hate her. She meant it when she shouted at the sky that her mother would rot in a paper prison, and yet half of Tella wanted to free her even more than before. She wanted to prove to Paloma that she wasn't just a useless ornament to be given away, that she was as fearless and clever and brave and worth loving. Her mother cursed ring weighed down Tella's finger. Maybe Dante would find this loophole in his mansion to skirt around the curse, but if he didn't, Tella knew she would enslave herself to the stars to rescue a woman who might not love her. But what if Dante succeeded in finding a way for Tella to use her ring to get into the star's vault without having to give herself away? If Dante was really legend, could Tella then turn to him and give him over to Jax, knowing what Jax planned to do? Everything was so twisted. Tella told herself that if Dante was legend, it meant he didn't care about her. But maybe he hadn't offered to heal her earlier that night because he believed she was no longer cursed. He could have thought that when he'd given her the blood before she had been saved, but if that was true, why had she been bleeding again? Tella wanted to think the best for Dante, but whatever he cared about was beside the point. If Dante was legend, he would not hesitate to destroy the fates. Tella wasn't usually one to make safe choices. In her experience, the safe choice often felt like not making a choice at all, like politely stepping away and allowing others with more power to do what they saw fit. Legend and Jax both have more power than Tella, but they each needed her to get the one thing they wanted, her mother's deck with destiny. Without Tella, neither of them could touch the cursed deck. Without Tella, legend couldn't destroy the fates and Tella's mother. And without Tella, Jax could not free the fates or steal legend's magic so that he once again be at his full power and have the ability to control hearts and feelings and emotions. It seemed both expected her to win the game. But perhaps the only way Tella would really come out victorious was if she chose to no longer play in their games. If she left her mother where she was in her cursed cards, where they were safe in the star's vault, where neither Jax nor Legend could touch them. Something like guilt prickled inside of Tella at the thought of allowing her mother to remain trapped in the card, but Bloom would have treated Tella's life as if it were a piece of coltero. Her mother was no better than Jax the Legend, and Tella could be damned before she allowed any of them to use her like a pawn on a game board again.